So mega pastor Joel Osteen announced that he has paid off a $100 million loan. He said this to his congregation as he wiped away the tears. He said, it's because of your faithfulness, you have paid it off by the goodness of God. So it was his congregation that paid off a $100 million loan that he had. And he went on to say this, what God has done for Lakewood, he's going to do in your life. I believe in 2024, God is going to release you from things that have held you back. Now, folks, I'm going to be dead honest with you about Joel Osteen, okay? He almost reeled me in back when I was a teenager. And I'll tell you why he did. I grew up going back and forth between the Pentecostal and the Southern Baptist churches. And the preachers that I sat under was what we referred to as fire-breathing preachers. Man, they came down on you hard. And they let you know that every idle thought that went through your head and every idle word you said out of your mouth could endanger you for all of eternity. And you could be tortured for all of eternity in hell. And they would sit there and they would scream and they would rant and they would rave and they would run up and down the aisles. And I've saw ministers literally jump up and run the backs of the pews while speaking in tongues. And they would say to us that you are going to die and go to hell for anything that you say or do wrong in this world. And there was time sitting there as a kid. I mean, it was traumatic. It still is traumatic when I think back on it. And so all of a sudden, one night, I'm just flipping the channels and I stumble across Joel Osteen. And there he is up there just speaking calmly. He's just got a smile on his face. He's cracking some jokes. He's talking about your relationship with God and the joy that it can bring you and the hope that it can bring you into your life. And I said to myself, well, that's kind of a breath of fresh air. I've not really heard a preacher talk like that before. And I almost got sucked right into one of his traps. As a matter of fact, I'll own it. Back when I was a teenager, I went out and bought one of his books. And I was like, you know, this guy seems to be okay. I mean, he seems to be because of the kind of ministers that I was exposed to as a kid. But then I got to looking around at just how much money he was making off of his church. Joel Osteen is worth over $50 million. His church rakes in $43 million a year. He has 50,000 people in attendance every week and over 200 million people watching worldwide and when you look at his damn house, it looks like something that would be in Disney World. And you say to yourself, what have the followers of his church, the people that goes to his church, the people that watches him online, the people that buys his book, goes and pays to watch him talk, what have they got back out of it? What have they got in return? I would love to talk with some Lakewood church members in 2025 and see if indeed God just miraculously suddenly paid off all of their debts. I wonder if they will be dug out of their hole or if they will sit there and continue to give this man their money week in and week out to make him richer and richer and richer. I've always made this argument. If you hire a carpenter to build you a house, he gets taxed to do so. But he builds you a house that you can live in for the rest of your life. If you take your car to a mechanic, he can rebuild your car and get it back on the road He's going to pay taxes. He's going to be taxed to do so. But he's going to give you a service that at the end of the day is actually going to help you. If you hire a truck driver to deliver goods, he's going to be taxed to do so, but he's actually going to bring it and he's actually going to deliver it to your door. These ministers that stand up here every week and tell their congregation, oh, Oh, God is going to bless you. If you'll just keep sending money to me, they are never going to give you anything back in return. You're never going to have anything that you can hold in your hand and say, I got this because I followed what Joel Osteen said. Look here. I got a damn microphone right here. All right. Sennheiser microphone. Someone made this. Okay. I paid money for it. And the company that made this was taxed, but I got it. I can sit here. I can sing into it all day long. And I have it. What does the people that goes to Joel Osteen's church have that they can hold in their hand and they can say, Joel Osteen, because of my belief in him, got me this. A guy like that sits back and gets rich off of his congregation. And people are fine with that. People are okay with guys like that just getting the pass and riding around in the biggest Lear jets and riding around in the finest of clothes and and whining and dining in the finest of places and they're perfectly okay with that and they will sit there living their life driving back and forth to work every day scraping by to make ends meet working hard i'm not saying these people don't work hard they do that's what's so frustrating about it we see these people work really hard and then they will fork over their money to the likes of joel osteen in hopes 
that their debts will get wiped away because, well, he did. No, God didn't wipe away Joel Osteen's debt. His supporters did. And he said so. It's because of you and your faithfulness. But what did they get out of it in return? What was gave back to them in return that was worth anything? These churches, and especially the ones that gets out here and gets on these political kicks, they should pay taxes. Churches should not be exempt. Can you imagine what we could do with that money if we had it to actually help people with? If you go to a church and they're up there telling you who to vote for, they don't need to be tax exempt. They need to pay up because they're no longer a church, they're a political organization. And Joel Osteen, while he's a feel-good preacher and he's got a nice smile and he can sit there and tell you all about your joy, he almost sucked me in as a teenager. I almost bought into it for a split second until I looked around and realized, man, look how much money this guy has made and he's never gave them something they could hold in their hand. They're still sitting there waiting. Let's, let's wait till 2025 and let's contact the members of the Lakewood Church and let's ask them if they're out of debt. Let's ask them if they've got something they can hold in their hand. I'll bet you money they won't have it. But they sent their money to help Joel. And it's just one of the most disgusting things that I've ever sat back and watched.